Professor Dave and Chegg here, many chemical reactions that we have studied so far can be considered essentially unidirectional. There are reactants, and these get used up to form products, after which the reaction is over. But many systems do not operate like this. There exist chemical equilibria, in which there is a forward reaction and reverse reaction, and both are happening constantly. In such a dynamic equilibrium, it appears that there is no activity, but it is only because the rates of the forward and reverse reaction are the same, so it seems as though nothing is changing. Think of a crowded day at the beach. At any given time, people are entering the water while others are exiting the water. But if people are entering and exiting the water at the same rate, it seems as though nothing is changing, and there will always be the same number of people in the ocean. There are many chemical reactions that behave in this manner, often because the reaction occurs in a closed vessel where products are not able to escape, which makes them available to behave as reactants in the reverse reaction. This is the case with dinitrogen tetroxide, or N2O4, which will decompose to form nitrogen dioxide, NO2, which can then recombine to form the reactant again. We can monitor this reaction because the reactant is colorless while the product is brown, so as the reaction initially proceeds in the forward direction, it will become darker until it reaches equilibrium. At equilibrium, concentrations will become constant, and the forward and reverse rates of reaction will become constant as well as equivalent to one another, since the forward and reverse reactions must be occurring at precisely the same rate in order for the concentrations to remain constant. In order for such an equilibrium to occur, the reaction must be reversible, and we will denote this with the equilibrium arrows, which illustrate motion in both directions. All reactions are technically reversible, but for some, one direction is preferred by such an astronomical amount that we regard it as essentially unidirectional. Some are easily reversible under certain conditions, so those are the ones that we will discuss in terms of an equilibrium. It is therefore important to always keep in mind that in a chemical equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions never stop. They simply result in a constant concentration, which gives the illusion of inactivity. Equilibria exist in the way of physical processes too, like phase changes, such as the equilibrium between liquid and vapor for any substance in a closed container. Some particles are vaporizing, and some particles are condensing at any given time, but at equal rates, so the system appears inactive. This concept of equilibria as possessing both a forward and reverse reaction is very important, and we will have to describe such systems mathematically, so let's take a look at that next. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.